So if I was going to look at this problem, ladies and gentlemen, um, automatically I'd say, ooh, I can use a trig identity. But the thing that we have is this two right there is messing it all up, right? So I can't just convert this to a trig identity. Um, what I can do, though, is notice that this has a cosine and a sine, and this just has a sine. So if I could maybe rewrite my left side in just in terms of sine, I might have, I might have like a one up. I might be able to do something with that. Now, automatically, some people always say, well, I know cosine plus sine, or cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. But when they subtract, that doesn't equal anything. All right? So what I need to do is, how about, let's try to get rid of that cosine squared and rewrite it. So if I read cosine squared, that's the same thing as, if I know that sine squared of eta plus cosine squared of eta equals one. So what does just cosine squared of eta mean? Well, let's subtract the sine squared of eta. So I can say cosine squared of eta equals one minus sine squared. Does that make sense? See what I did? See, I rewrote the cosine squared so it then equals something by using that trig identity. Oh, that so now what I can do is I can write this in. So I write one minus sine squared beta minus sine squared beta. Well, a negative sine squared beta minus another sine squared beta is gonna equal minus two. So I have one minus two sine squared of beta equals one minus two. That's it. Okay. It's really just a way, guys, of manipulating your equations and simplifying them so that one side is going to equal your left side. 